Aloha. It's December the 16th. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. It's time for Rediscovering America. I'm Tim Apicella, your host. And the title of this show is Trump Winning Big. His PAC scores $225 million. You know, a lot has happened since this last week from our last show. Um, a number of, of signals that would say the party's over for Donald Trump. So, but the moniker that he's losing isn't, isn't really, he's not really losing. And, and the proof is that when you can earn $225 million in less than five weeks, I don't know if that's losing. Uh, in my world, I can't make $225 million in a month and one week. Um, so what's really occurred since the last, our last show? Well, first off, we know that all 50 states had certified the vote. Then what we saw was um, the Supreme Court finally said no to the, ch the challenge of Texas. They said, no, we're not even gonna entertain the case. It was without standing, without merit. And then we saw the Electoral College as of Monday, excuse me, Electoral College. Uh, we saw them vote and confirm that Joe Biden will be the next president. And then lo and behold, yesterday, Mitch McConnell finally ex accepted that fact and uh, you know, acknowledged that Joe Biden will be the president. And last but not least, and probably more important to Donald Trump than anything, is his old buddy, Vladimir Putin, acknowledged that Joe Biden will be the next president. So in this last week, have we heard anything from Donald Trump to address COVID? And now the th over 300,000 deaths that we have of Americans, have we heard anything about the horrific uh, hacking of multiple government agencies and standing up to uh, Vladimir Putin and saying, what do you think you're doing? We haven't heard any of that. What have we heard? The election was stolen from me. It was fraudulent and we will fight on. And in that statement, fighting on means we're gonna keep gathering and collecting money from our would-be followers. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce our guests. Good morning, everyone. We have Jay Fidel, Winston Welch, Stephanie Dalton, Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Good morning, everyone. Morning, Tim. Good morning, Tim. So Jay, to you, we just had a major uh, break-in of all our, our many, many um, government computers. Uh, they're not necessarily stealing something, but they're, they're up to something. And, and not a word from the president about this. All he's concerned about is we will fight on. And you know, I think the end's coming near to him. He's going, how can I continue to, to get donations from my followers when all the indications that as I have lost the election and I'm not gonna overturn this. And so I can't convince them to keep giving me money. Uh, where does this end for Donald Trump? P.S. Uh, just last hour, we had a show on the technical side of that thing with Andrew Lanning, our host on Security Matters, um, to uh, you know, examine what happened here. It's not entirely totally clear that Russia did it, but it's likely. Um, and Russia has been doing it for a while. So on the one hand, as you say, uh, Putin is uh, admitting that uh, Biden won the election, but on the other hand, behind his back, he's got, he's got legions of programmers and hackers that are attacking American uh, business and especially government. And you know, remember uh, two, three weeks ago, uh, the press was saying, watch out. If you have a sloppy transition, national security takes a hit. And people, that is nation states like China, Russia, take advantage and Russia is taking advantage. And in the meantime, Trump is doing nothing. How do we say nothing? I think nada, rien, anybody got another word for uh, nothing? Um, yeah. Yeah. Nada, nada. Not, nada, 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 nada. Do you, know, do you know that Trump has not had a cabinet meeting since May? The cabinet of the administration of the United States has not met since May. He, in answering your question, he hasn't done anything about COVID. He hasn't done anything about anything. Zero. It's like he's not in office anymore. And meanwhile, the country is suffering for it. I think it's heinous what's happening now. And uh, Bi Biden is, uh, you know, talking a good game and, um, you know, giving us confidence and hope and all that. Reality is we have no government now. Zero government. How do you say zero? Zero government. Nada. 
not a. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jay, for your comments. And uh, Winston, to you, um, what do you think more can happen between now and January 20th to further erode our government and uh, set us up for either more computer hacking from our, um, you know, from foreign, foreign countries? Or what else could go wrong in the next, uh, you know, 30 days? Well, yeah, I mean, the universe of what if. I think, it, as New Yorkers uh, put out an article recently called Trump's coup attempt isn't over. There's still, this is going to go on after he's out of office. He's said he's going to, he should run a shadow. Uh, uh, someone suggests he run a shadow presidency after uh, he's out. And every time that um, uh, Biden gives a, a presidential press conference, he'll have his own and blah, blah. And he, you know, touting that one America network or, or Newsmax or one of them beat Fox News. And uh, so this is not going away, but hopefully he'll be minimized as time goes by. I'm not sure it will work, but who knows? Maybe as the, the media finds something else to latch onto. What I, what I was um, heartened about was Mitch McConnell, although I, I thought Anderson Cooper giving his uh, a, a talk about the slow clap award for him finally acknowledging reality. Um, now Mitch McConnell, like all the uh, Republicans, was running scared. Uh, and rightly so. They, their lives have been threatened, literally threatened, about upholding the rule of law and the Constitution of the United States that supersedes their party. That's uh, the more scary part and, and things splintering. And if Donald Trump gives some a coded or not so coded tweet out, um, that's a little bit scary too. But the rats are fleeing from the, from the ship. Mike yeah. Pompeo is now quarantined because his party of 900 last night, I guess they didn't wear masks and uh, he didn't even go. So I'm, glad, I'm sure his guests were happy that they didn't go either. Um, as we attempt to understand what we've just been through, I think there's a couple of articles that I thought were really interesting. Slate had one called America's Attempting to Exit an Abusive Relationship on December 15th. I thought it was quite interesting. And another one that's similar is uh, in Politico came out, um, what the science of addiction tells us about Trump and that your brain on grievances looks like a lot like your brain on drugs. And it's not just a problem for the outgoing president, but for all of us. And that was came out on the 12th. I thought these are, um, these will be helpful as we move forward to understand what we have just been through, what we are currently going through. It gives us language, it gives us structure, it gives us uh, parallels in other areas of life. So I'm encouraged by these types of articles and new understanding for people that realize that they may have been held hostage to ideas that are utterly insane. And at some point they will give it up or they won't, but the rest of us got to move on. And I was heartened to see that the, that the Senate leadership is moving forward, that indeed they're putting out bills that Donald Trump specifically said he would veto. He's not going to veto them in the end, or they will be overridden. So he has asked specifically the senators, he says, it would be a nightmare if you sign on to challenge this vote on January 6th, because we will all have to go down and say we are, uh, we're voting against uh, Trumpism. And if they don't have to do it, they don't have to do it. But in some way, it might just expose things for what they are. But I think at this point, we need more baking soda poured on everything in our nation, just to calm everyone down, get behind Biden and uh, Kamala Harris, who gave who were very magnanimous uh, towards um, McConnell, I have to say. Yeah. And no, they were. We got to um, work with them. Yeah, they, they, I think they left the door open. I don't think they were um, at all taking them on and criticizing nope. them um, harshly for, right. for being mum for the last uh, five weeks. Okay, right. thank you, Winston. Hey, Stephanie, um, I noticed that Donald Trump did pivot a little bit. He shifted. Uh, he's now asking his loyal followers whether or not it's a good idea for him to run in 2020, you know, 2024. Um, and that pivot then is now shifting from, uh, we're going to reverse the vote. I'm going to be retain my presidency and I'm going to be uh, serving two terms. He's pivoting in on that because he's, he's earned his $225 million. And he knows that, you know, that message isn't going to sell anymore. So now he can pivot and say, why don't you donate for my 2024 campaign? And uh, that inevitability that I'm going to run and be your next president uh, coming around 2024. Um, is that a winning strategy? Will that work? Thank you, Tim. I think, uh, yeah, that's a great question. I, I'm, I believe that it will work for a while. But I think that, uh, as the media has mentioned, he will no longer be in what's called 
the A1 block. A1 block of topics is evidently something they have to run or are obligated to run. Well, he, he's always in it. So he's gonna not be in that any longer and he's gonna have to do stuff to get there. So um, I think that that's a very good sign because we, it will dra should drop the exposure of him. Meanwhile, as Jay has pointed out, the NADA a gig is almost over. And I'd like to call that the dereliction of duty gig because since, as Jay mentioned too, no cabinet meetings for six months, not to mention other oversight that didn't uh, occur. And now we've had this hack, gosh knows what it is that they've all got now. Six months of not, of them in our stuff that we didn't do anything to block or even know it was happening. That is such a swipe at US expertise on this and all, all having to do with leadership. Certainly, you know, everybody needs to ramp up the game here, but the leadership was not there, no oversight. And especially by him, he's paid nothing attention to anything except his own. Well, own. What, at what point does the lack of leadership be overruled uh, for national security? I mean, just because you don't feel like doing your job doesn't mean you're going to allow our national security to fall by the way, you know, the waste, and you do a, nothing and to defend not only the Constitution but defend the security of the nation and its people. At what point is there a Constitution provision to say we're stepping in if you're not willing to do your job? We should well, hope. Well, we need to search. Well, let's review. That's a very good point. I mean, that's another one to go on the list of after. Uh, we're past and into the next administration, things to think about to strengthen our democracy. And I think that uh, his, those consequences, I believe, you know, I felt like could be there the whole time because anytime you're not paying attention and I don't think he was much paying attention through the whole four years, except on the stuff that he was immediately knee jerking and attending to. And so that's going to have an effect, as we all know. I mean, that's not any big surprise to anybody. If you're not paying mm -hmm. attention, you're going to get consequences. And here we go. And these are pretty major. And I think that, um, to finish up, that this is going to roll out, in answer to your first question, this is going to continue to roll out what else has happened that he has no awareness of and had hollowed out agencies and work that didn't get done and heaven only knows what is going to you know be presented as undone and left unattended and a mess and that should help with his uh later uh trying to get attention when he's seen as derelict in his duty right well i see i see one um option for him and i'm gonna go to cynthia with this one thank you very much stephanie uh, Cynthia, let's play what if. Let's let's pretend or not pretend, but it could be a reality. Let's say that the two senators in Florida um, are checkmarked in the uh, Democrat column. And now Joe Biden will enjoy the luxury of a Senate control and a House of Representative control. Um, does that help Donald Trump even more? In Georgia, don't you? Yes. And what did I say? In Florida. Oh. My, yeah, in Georgia. Um, does that help Donald Trump raise even more money as he now is going to become the, the Superman of candidates to right the wrong that took place in Georgia? Oh, I think that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to use every little nuance that he can to twist this and to keep the narrative going that he was robbed um, and that the only way to get America back is um, through his own machinations. Everyone must follow him. It's the only way to get it back. Where, you know, some people are saying the only way to get it back is through revolution. Now, does he support that? Oh, yes. Do we hear lots of talk of civil war? Oh, yes. Do we need lots of baking soda like Winston says? Oh, yes, we do. Um, you know, even if it's just to talk to one person, to reach out to one person that you know thinks opposite of you and just try to have a discourse with them. Don't expect them to be nice because they won't be. But it's like the, you know, do pull the whole, um, you know, Michelle Obama thing where when they go low, you go high. And that's what we're going to have to do in order to get the baking soda needed. 
to connect with other people, I think. Okay, thank you. I, I think that leads me, um, your last point leads me to the next question, Jay. Um, we had 126 GOP representatives sign on to overthrow this election in, in four different states, representing over 20 million voters and their votes. We had 17 other state attorney generals uh, contest the, the elections in those four states. What are the ramifications uh, for these people that signed on to that? Uh, other than a, a, a letter of chastise from Nancy Pelosi to them, what other, what other provisions are available to say that this was uh, deplorable behavior on their part and it won't be tolerated in the future and we don't wanna see again something like this in the future? What can be done about that? I think we should, I think we should criticize them right here on ThinkTech um, and continue to do that. I think, I think the media should criticize them forever and ever, especially when it comes time that they're running again. A lot of them will be running in two years. Um, but I think it, it, it opens a, a whole discussion, Tim, the, a discussion you and I have had offline. Um, it's about, you know, so Trump will be gone <clears throat> soon. Um, and uh, there'll be more trouble, but ultimately, you know, January 20th, he'll be gone. And the, the, the Trump swamp will have been drained. And what do we got down there? What do we got at the bottom of that swamp? We, we have, um, you know, the reveal of uh, some really bad problems in this country. This country is screwed up to a fairly well uh, that 70 million people could vote for an open despot. Um, that people would uh, oppose masks, um, you know, when it saves their lives. Um, they could go to parties when it threatens their, their health. I was mentioning before the show that the mayor of uh, Dodge City, Kansas, did you say, Winston, Kansas, uh, resigned today <clears throat> because uh, she, was, uh, she had an initiative about encouraging people to wear masks in Dodge City. And they threatened her over it. The skinheads threatened her over it. She said, to hell with this, I resign. Um, and so, I mean, we have a real breakdown in this country of rationality, of civic, um, of, ci of, of civic engagement, if you will. Nice idea, Cynthia, that we should all try to talk to the other guy, but lots of luck. We have 70 million people who, who believe they're right and we're wrong and won't hear any of it. Where do we get to a place like this? We have, we have hundreds of legislators who have their heads in very dark places. Uh, how did they get there? Uh, well, that that goes of... to my point, Jay, and that is uh, to coin, you know, uh, Michelle Obama's and Cynthia's point, when they go low, we go high. How high should we go? Because without consequences, what's to prevent the next party from, do, you know, the next person from doing the exact same thing, but even more destructive? So how high do we go? Well, <clears throat> the first thing is to recognize the problem. And the problem is not just Trump. With Trump's departure, we find the reality. The reality, the country is all screwed up. Um, people are ill-educated. They have no sense of duty to the country. They couldn't care. They think the country doesn't need them and they don't need the country, which is totally wrong. Um, and and we, we have a major problem. It's not just a few Republicans here and there. It's 70 million people. How do you start that? I mean, if we talk about uh, education, as Stephanie often does, um, we're talking about a generation of kids we're going to have to retrain against the wishes of some of their families who would tell them, no, 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 uh, you don't need to be retrained. You, you have to listen to people like Trump. Um, we have to change our mindset for at least 70 million people. Um, just because he's gone doesn't mean we don't have this problem. We have this problem. And I, you know, I have confidence in Biden that he will appreciate the problem. I'm not sure how much he can do. The, uh, you know, Secretary of Education is a very important pick, but also it's it's the leadership we've all been talking about for months and years here um, on this show, and that is some somebody's got to get up and say, wait a minute, let's get rational, because the alternative is really bleak. Reality is what we have now is going to continue after Trump. And further, the last point I want to make is that 225 million, I actually think is significantly more than that. Um, and thank you for, thank you to the Supreme Court for Citizens United making that all possible. He's got a slush fund as big as your, your arm. Um, and yeah, he'll use it to pay off Deutsche Bank. He'll use it for all kinds of personal transactional things. No question about that. Um, but he'll also use it to primary 
uh, Republicans who don't go along with him in the next couple of years. And Just he'll to try set to the tone. Set the tone. He'll try to keep them crazy. He'll try to develop leadership by using money. And in this country, money, money really talks. Money talks politically. Money is power. And he'll try to use that to continue his power. And what we've got to do, the media, especially the media is free in that regard, and Biden, uh, and any right-thinking Democrat, we've got to go high. As you say, we've got to protect our democracy. We cannot be complacent in any way. Trump is there. He'll continue to be there. And even if he drops dead, the fact is you've got 70 million people who are also cockamamie. Yeah. So what are we going to do? We have to preserve this country. It's our collective duty, um, but it ain't easy. And that's why we have to keep on doing the show. Thank you, James. Winston, um, on the same topic, are there any um, remedies available to Nancy Pelosi if she wanted to somehow uh, point out these 126 GOP representatives other than a letter of uh, chastisement? Uh, are there any um, sanctions that could be implemented or is there anything that anyone can do to really, other than a news story, uh, is there anything that anything could be done to say that that was not a right thing to do? Uh, you know, I, as, I, as I look at, at how Kamala Harris and, and Joe Biden and McConnell and uh, the, what did they call them, the Four Corners, um, uh, got together and, and uh, the Senate majority minority and House majority minority leaders, they're coming together on this, on some sort of COVID relief bill, whether it includes waivers for businesses or whatnot. They know, they know that the entire system's in jeopardy. They know that one man has been driving it and that he is fueling, just pouring, pumping gasoline on, on, on folks and that they're, they're biting. You got 126 representatives who signed onto this. Fortunately, no senators have signed on to this. So that tells you something a little bit that they are sober uh, to some degree and that they have been held hostage by this man as much as anybody else, as much as the Democrats or anyone else. And they are happy to see him go. Mitch McConnell is not stupid. Um, he's stayed in power. He preceded the Donald Hill. He'll, he'll survive him too. He is um, a wily old Kentuckian and uh, he realizes that his party is in mortal danger at this point uh, because it is not, it's seen, I saw there was a, on Joy, um, oh, the lady on MSNBC, uh, she, she had Steve Schmidt on, Joy um, Reed. 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 Yes, and she had Steve Schmidt on and he was a Republican strategist. Now he's quit the party. He says, I am a Democrat now because I am a single issue voter. And that is, I believe in, democracy and this is the only party of democracy now and when you get enough people like that who are republican strategists saying this party of authoritarianism is not american anymore um a new yorker had a really good article on that called it's not just trump's war on democracy anymore and another one um in washington post on how the stolen election myth will swallow the gop mitch mcconnell and other leaders realize that and they they need to rein back they need to reclaim their party uh as as much as we may disagree with some of the fundamental ideas there um they need to reclaim the americanness of their party and get back to sanity where we are not held by i, I, I think there's very good parallels to what happened in the cultural revolution in china uh, there was a really interesting piece about the french revolution and uh, how people tried to deflect blame and how that didn't go well um Mm -hmm. I am I am hopeful that at the top we're seeing these adult moves where they're just sidelining and marginalizing Donald Trump and eventually the noise will drown out. And I think that is Cynthia's suggestion writ large, right? It's it's our individual outreach to somebody, but at that level, it's very symbolic when they're sitting down and they're not saying, hey, you guys have like been totally screwing with this all along. They're just saying, what are we going to get together, done together right now that we can all agree on? and put the other stuff aside in literally another bill or whatever it is. So I'm remaining hopeful, but we have serious work to do, educational, moral, um, uh, cultural. Uh, Stephanie's right, it begins with education, it begins with civics classes, it begins with every ninth grader volunteering to walk little old ladies across the street, Boy Scouts picking up trash and all the whole nine yards. And 
and us getting back involved in it gets us back nation. to the social contract with america and and what yeah. this is all about and you're right that's, that's right. been uh, noticeably absent not only for the last five years but you know certainly even before then so good point winston i i thank you very much um switching gears slightly uh stephanie our friend william barr well your friend william barr he's not our friend <laughs> um you know at the very end he kind of pulled it out of a nosedive he he did two very important things is he didn't announce the investigation on hunter biden um before the election he didn't announce that which i think trump is very very upset about because that would have helped him and then the second and the more important thing is he basically he didn't basically he said there was no reason to suspect that fraud was evident in this election and he found no credible evidence of fraud that would make any change in how the election went so these two items does he get a pass uh, on those two things that he did does does that redeem william barr the the roy cohen uh for the president of the united states does that somehow redeem him that is really an interesting question and i think you know they're looking at it and the major programs and they've also compared his denouement period uh for for from trump now as uh with with what he did with um bush um president dad bush dad bush so he stayed with dad bush right to the end of the administration and uh, was right there with him the whole time and, and doing all kinds of things and evidently dad bush also did some questionable pardoning too so he, he's got the goods and the experience to do that so it's a it's questionable um you're, you're raising all those uh issues i mean what they actually mean is he fired is he resigning is he actually getting consequences for not uh doing Trump's bidding, even though a Crow Magnon can understand that Hunter Biden is a kid and not a White House employee or elected to office. So why do we care about him anyway? And then the other one um, is, uh, is, is certainly concerning too. So we'll, we'll know more about that. And um, I think that uh, my understanding is now that he's gone, we, we've got very weakened institutions is my understanding of it. All of our institutions are really down and they're scrambling at the, 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 at the attorney general's um, um, Department of Justice because that's been so hollowed out, except for now they've got somebody stepping up to take Barr's place, which I think might really be Trump's interest is having the man come up behind Barr because he is even more dire in his purposes than than uh, Barr was, and he will be more Roy Cohen for Trump and. The background that he has is really chilling in what he has managed to put through and support it over time. Now okay. The, yeah, we, so uh, I mean, uh, what can we say until we know more, right? Yeah, we will know more, unfortunately, we have to live through the rest of this. Thank you for your perspective. We're running out of time. Cynthia, same question to you. Um, we've got less than a minute. Okay, well, I don't think he um, resigned. I don't even think he wrote that effusive letter either his in his letter of you know resignation i think he was fired i think that was a very um a carefully crafted letter of resignation uh to to hide the fact that he was fired because trump doesn't want it to be known that he was fired because he didn't do the things he wanted him to so you know I, at least that's my thought on the whole thing um, I'd like to speak to one thing really fast because I know we're almost out of time. We, but we are out of time, but go ahead. <laughs> you mentioned something about this whole thing with Russia and well, this whole new breach into our um, our grid, which is, is just crazy with all of the state departments, the treasury, finance, HHS. I mean, these are big, you know, the Forbes 500 people. We don't even have any idea how extensive it is yet but these are some of the things that trump has done or not done but these are the things that he has done that are good for russia 
He sided with Russia over American intel on Russian meddling in the 2016 election. Never talked to Putin about reported bounties on US troops. Publicly says Russia is part of Crimea. Withdrew troops from Syria. Fought implementation of Congress approved sanctions. Fought with Western allies and attacked the EU. Invited Putin to the G7 and never ever once criticized Putin. Yeah. So, well, uh, Putin got the best deal he could possibly get with Donald Trump. You get the last word on that. Uh, this is our last show until 2021. Uh, very, in a couple words, any, um, any wishes to our audience and um, any wise words for this end of this year? Well, keep your head down, wear your mask, wash your hands, don't touch your face. Um, pray for our country, pray for, pray for glory, pray, pray for peace, um, pray for, for healing and unity to come back to our country. And All right, thank, thank you. you. Jay, Jay, you're next. Any last words for this year watch. and uh, for 2021? Thank you very much, Cynthia. Watch out. Watch out the next few weeks. He's got other things up his sleeve. And watch out even after that, because he'll do things that will try to bring Biden down. So we have to be strong and we shouldn't be surprised with what kinds of things happen. We have to maintain our vigilance at all times now. Wise words. Thank you, Jay. Winston. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful for 2021. The nation stood. The Supreme Court voted unanimously to not even hear the case. There are institutions that have withstood this uh, uh, unprecedented assault, and we will shore up and repair the other ones over the next four years and rediscover, as per the title of our show, America and what it means to step up to civic duty and find the goodness within each of us and collectively. Thank you. Stephanie? Mahalo everyone for watching this show, which to us is, is a joy and uh, hopefully you get some pleasure and information from it. Thank you very much and Meli Kaliki Maka. Don't forget to talk about Coronaville tomorrow, Tim. Tomorrow, 11 o'clock, Thursday, Coronaville. Be there and be informed. I'm Tim Apicella, your host. I'd like to just say, have a blessed holiday between now and the uh, end of the year, be safe, be healthy, and count your blessings because we all have many. Sometimes we don't take the, to acknowledge it or even recognize it. So God bless everyone. We'll see you next year, Rediscovering America. I'd like to thank Jay Fidel, Winston Welch, Stephanie Dalton, and Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Aloha, everyone. See you next year.